About a week ago, my bearded friend Ryan Bruce made a video on his channel debuting the new Hagstrom Ghost Signature Guitar. He asked me to lay down a sexy little solo on his cover of Mummy Dust that he put on there. Since then, I've gotten a lot of requests on a lesson on how to play it. So, here you go. Hello there guys and ghouls and welcome to a new installment of Weekend Wank Shop here with your good buddy, Uncle Ben. If you haven't seen Ryan Bruce's demo of the new Hagstrom Phantomen Ghost Signature Guitar, be sure to go and check it out. It gives you a complete rundown of the guitar and all of its features, which looks really cool. I would love to get my hands on one of those sometime. And it also features a short little mini cover of the song Mummy Dust from Ghost Record Meliora. I was really excited whenever Ryan asked me to put down a guitar solo on top of it because I really love the original keyboard solo that's there on the record. I mainly based the solo that I played on the original keyboard parts, I'd say about, I don't know, 75% of it. It's pretty much note for note with the keyboards play, but with a couple of additional licks for added Uncle Ben flair. But before we get into it, let's hear it again at Step Papa Speed. And as always, for a complete tab of this week's lesson, be sure to visit my Instagram page and give me a follow over at Ben Eller Guitars. Find the tab for this week's lesson, learn how to play it, and then upload a video of yourself shredding along with the hashtag WeekendWankShop. So tuning-wise, the original song and Ryan's guitar parts that he recorded for a cover are in drop C tuning, C, G, C, F, A, D from low to high. But I'm a standard tuningsman, so I am in standard tuning for my performance of that solo. This mainly sticks around the key of D minor, the saddest of all keys. Here's the first line of the solo. This lick is actually just a unison a couple octaves up of the uh, little line in the guitar riff that's going on underneath it. It's a cool idea in your solos. Anytime you can grab something from the riff, do it. What I'm doing here is I'm playing the 10th fret B, 9th fret B, 10th fret G, and then this little sequence. What I'm doing is I'm playing the 8th fret G string, Hammer on, pull off to nine, slide down to seven. It's kind of an odd line. So again, that's eight, nine, eight, slide to seven. Next is this high sequence. I'm playing the high E string 17, 18, 15, 17, 13, 15. So that's and then I'm going to go to the B string here and play 17, 15, 13. Just like that. Here's the next phrase. I'm sliding back into that 13th fret B string. 15, 13 with a hammer on pull off to 15 and then a slide to 12. So that's 13, hammer 15, pull back off to 13, slide to 12. Okay. Then you're going to play 13, 12, 10, 12, 10. So that whole phrase should be... This is actually the exact same phrase that started the solo. It's just moved up another octave. So it's just like this. Just an octave higher. How I'm going to do that is to play the high E string 17, then 16. Then we're going to get up here on the B string and play 18. And then I'm going to uh, play the B string 16, hammering on to 17, 
pulling off to 16, sliding to 15. So there's only one pick stroke. That's 16, hammer 17, pull 16, slide 15. Now what I did right there is after I finished that last phrase, I held the 15th fret B string, sustained it for a little while, gave it some juicy vibrats, and then I dipped it with the bar. Uh, no real specific amount, just till it's kind of floppy. And then with the bar still depressed, so I'm still pressing on the bar, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit fret 20 and simultaneously bend it up a whole step while releasing the bar. It's kind of a lot of movements going on. Let's look at that again. So the last phrase ended on the 15. I dive bomb it. With it still bombed, I grab 20, bend, and let the bar up at the same time. I'm just letting the bar back to neutral. I'm not additionally pulling up on the bar because what I want to end up with here is the sound of the A note, fret 22 on the B string right there. So yeah, hit, dip, bend, release. Then we get that hybrid picked arpeggio thing. There's plenty of ways you can do this without hybrid picking, but that's just kind of how mama raised me to play this kind of stuff. The idea is really simple. It's this lick played in three octaves. Now what this is, is I'm starting off on the low E string here, fret number five on the A note, and I'm hammering on to fret number six, the B flat. Then what I'm gonna do is go down here to the A string and pick fret number five and hammer on fret number seven, D to E. So now you got After this, go back to your middle finger up on the low E string, six fret, B flat note. And then on the A string, you're gonna play five, seven, hammer on eight. So that's important to notice where the hammer-ons are in here. Hammer on, hammer on, hammer on. Then you jump up an octave and do the same thing. That's going to translate to starting here on the D string, fret number seven, hammering on to eight. G string seven, hammering on to nine. Back to that D string eight, G seven, G nine, hammer on ten. After this, you're going to play it up another octave here. Tenth fret B string, hammering on to 11. High E string 10, hammering on to 12. Back to that B11. And then you're going to play high E string 10, 12, hammer on 13. And then the last thing you're going to do at the end of the lick there is hit the 12th fret high E string and give it a juicy pinch harmonic and a half step bend. So pinch harmonic on 12 half step bend up to the note F. This makes sense to me and works great, but uh, your mileage may vary. I'm using my pick and I'm using my middle finger to do some hybrid kind of plucking stuff here. Now what I'm doing is I'm starting off with a down stroke and a hammer on. Then I got a hybrid pick and a hammer on. Then I've got to go back to a down stroke, a hybrid pick, a down stroke, and a hammer on. So the pick is really only doing down strokes here. Down, hammer, hybrid, hammer, down, hybrid, pick, hammer. I do that in all the octaves. Down, hammer, hybrid, hammer, down, hybrid, down, hammer. And then the next one. Down, hammer, hybrid, hammer, down, hybrid, pick, hammer. And then, of course, the, the bend there at the end. If you don't want to deal with all the hybrid stuff though, you could always go down, up, down, up, down on all of those. That would feel pretty good. Down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down. That would work too. P.S. That is not what the original keyboard solo plays, but it does sound cool. This next part's really cool because it's mainly based around arpeggios that follow the chord stabs going on in the riff behind it on the keys and guitar. It's following like D minor, to C, to G, to D minor again. So all the licks are pretty much arpeggios of those following that progression. Also, that is damn well nearly the chord progression from Thriller. First part is over D minor here, and it's just the notes of a D minor chord. We're going to be playing the 12th fret D, which is D, the root. 10th fret G, which is an F note, the third, F flat third, whatever. The 10th fret 
B string, which is an A note, the fifth. Then we're going to go back to that 12th fret D. Then you're going to hit the 10th fret G again. So that's that's all for the D minor stuff. After you play that 10th fret G string note, you're going to slide up to 12. Like that. This is where we enter into the C major kind of section. So most of this is going to be based around C, E, and G. So after you play, you're going to grab 13th B, 12th G, 14th D, 15th A. That right there is just your C major arpeggio. So after you end up on that 15th fret A string, you're going to go back and play 14th D, 12th G, 13th B, 12th B, 12th G. So notice you got to kind of roll the first finger there. 14th D, 12th G. That's a whole lot of notes. Let me play that again slowly here. So whenever we landed on that 12th fret G string there, the G note, that's when the chord stab was on a G. So this is going to kind of reflect that tonality. I'm going to be playing the 12th fret G string, 14th fret A string, 12th fret D, 12th fret G. So that's just, again, that's a G major arpeggio right there. And then the chord hits the D minor. Now, what we're going to do here is to play straight up a D minor arpeggio. I'm going to be starting off on the 14th fret G string, 12th fret D, hammering on to 15, 14th G, 15th B, 14th G, 15th fret B, 13th fret high E. So, so far you got... So that ends the eighth note kind of section of the arpeggio parts. Parts that are going to go one and two and three and four and before it rockets off into the sixteenth notes, which is the next part. Before we get to that part right there, let's review all the eighth note section here. Two and three and four and... That's the next lick. That is the 17th fret high E string sliding to 22 and then sliding back to 17. Pulling off to 13. Then what you're going to do is to play 17 again, pull off to 13, 15B, 14G, back to the 15th fret B string. Again, that's not at all what the keyboard is playing right there. I just thought that it sounded kind of cool and a little bit more guitar-y, kind of a Marty Friedman-esque sliding arpeggio sort of thing. And again, the timing of that has to be just right so that you got all the eighth note stuff in front of it, and then that last blast is all sixteenth notes. And then the last couple of licks there to take you out of the solo. You're going to be starting off on the 12th fret D string, 14th D, 15th D, 14th G, 13th B. So that's... The next one here, you're going to start off on the 10th G, 12th G, 14th G. And then on the B string here, you're going to play 13 and 12. And for the last one, you're going to play 12th G, 14th G, 13th B sliding to 18, and then ending back on 15. So your first one was second one, and the third one. And the very last thing I do there is, that is the 15th fret B string with a one and a half step bend. So you're bending all the way up to that F note. Bend it all the way up, let it down, and then take it all the way back up again and give it some juicy vibrats. So when we put it all together, we got our intro lick, a little sequence up here on the high strings, reiterating the intro lick again here, dip, release and bend crazy arpeggio thing. 
And then the really difficult to memorize arpeggio section. Then your outro licks. And Monster Ben. That tab is really going to be your best friend for getting through some of those difficult to memorize parts like the arpeggio section and stuff like that. So be sure to get that from my Instagram page. Thank you guys so much for watching and a huge thanks to Ryan Bruce for asking me to contribute to his video debuting that sick looking guitar. I don't care what people say about that guy. He's alright. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel and also follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Ben Eller Guitars. You can also go like my Facebook fan page over at facebook.com slash Uncle Ben Eller. And if you're interested in booking some one-on-one -on -one Skype lessons with me, be sure to drop me an email, benellerguitars at gmail.com. Be sure to stay tuned for another sick lesson next week. Cheers, guys.